I am a newborn. Eleventh of my bloodline, I came to be within a family of settlers. Too powerful to be poor, too poor to be powerful. I am the first male son born since we came to this blue marble. I draw my first lung full of air surrounded not by those who loved me, but by machines and chirurgeons. They examine my limbs and inwards in invasive ways. I cried and felt pain and fear and cold, and there is disapproval in their eyes. They found me wanting. I am mesmerized. It was my fifth birthday when I finally could touch the sea, endless and all-powerful. It covered most of the world my family now calls home. An azure blue of chaotic movement and repeating pattern that was engraved on my very being. My young mind couldn't comprehend its pattern, but yet I was attracted to it. I could hear my name echoing just beneath the waves in a tone I thought impossible to hear. That night, I dream of diving into that underverse as far as my breath could take. The currents guided me ever deeper to waters somehow destined to me and me alone. But the deeps were too dark, and the water too cold. I wished that I could endure it, but I had not. The morning after I awakened from this dream with the news that I was to embark in a strange ship destined to go beyond the horizon. I am a student. My father sent me out of our home world to study in the best school he could afford. For the first time in my life I could see my home world as it was with my own eyes. A vast blue marble with nine tenths of its surface covered by nothing but that impossible vast ocean. Within this ship, harsh tutors and a personal physician was all that would keep me company and healthy. Beyond them, everything was alien to me. I am not enough. In the capital of our sector there were no second chances. Students are expelled for every new test made. Most of them are flogged in public before they are marched out in disgrace at the Skolas' gates. I have no family or friends here. In this endless jungle of permacrete and plasteel, I am alone. The greys and neon lights of the hives offends me. This place has made a chaotic order spawned from propaganda, fear and human flesh. An antonym of the sea that I so much miss. All I have are the endless trials and tests made to take my measure. Constant mental pressure threatens to turn me into the sludge that rains down to the underhives below. My bed is my only respite in this trying days. But even in the comforts of the night I found no peace. As the same dream plays again and again. I dream that I dive again into my ocean. But now I delve too deep into the sea. I cannot reach the surface. There was no air within my lungs and I'm almost giving in to despair. I am blessed. I found the answers that I needed. In my dreams I saw a lighthouse, impossibly vast and golden. Its purer light pierced the dark waters, illuminating the deeps of the ocean and filling it with teeming life. Now I could read the text written upon its tides and hear the music of its patterns. Kaleidoscopic fishes fetch me bottled messages left adrift with fragments of wisdom long thought lost with an eternal patience. They teach me all that I needed to know. There was no question the scholar's teachers gave me I couldn't answer, and no trial that was hard to me now. But the booms of the sea goes even beyond. In the sea's floor, I found treasure chests and spoils of wars ready for the plunder. Within the safes and chests were not jewelry and gold, but libraries of fates and counterfeits that were now mine to learn. I became master of the present and student of the future. I am cursed. The eyes of envy fell upon me. They denounced me as an imposter and a cheater. The masters of this world have their children flogged because of me, as they couldn't keep up with my connection to the ocean and fell from grace from the scholar. Now they demanded my head in justice for their disgrace, 
They put me on trial and found me cursed. Those jealous zealots condemned my bloodline for not giving me up to the black ships, and now they had to suffer for their crimes. The lords of the Scola wanted me burned at the stake. I dreaded the flames with all of my heart, and could feel the fire already touching my skin, but that wasn't to be my fate. They would make me into a tool. My family's name would be erased, their faces unremembered, their deeds expunged, their glories unsung, and we were all simply forgotten. I am a servitor. Blinded by light and deaf by the noise, they made me a living part of a machine I knew nothing of. When once I learned of politics and history, now the only lessons given to me were about pain and suffering. My mind was bombarded with bureaucracies and paperwork, day and night. A flood of orders and instructions was processed by my brain every single moment. Sleep was impossible, and thus the sea couldn't come to me. I saw myself in the moments of the deepest deliriums down on the ocean floor in utter darkness, crushed and forgotten, left to be picked apart by the scavengers that hide in the lightless deeps. Here, time passed with the speed of mountains, but it passed eventually. I discover myself not alone in this hell, but one within a circle of damned souls that join fate with me. I could see their shapes and silhouettes against the darkness of the lightless ocean, all linked within this torturous machine, forever bound to serve and to pay for their sins. I am something. I discover myself capable of taking over the hollow husks of those who were trapped within the same machine as me. The burden of concentration found in relaying the capital's orders is lessened the more husks I control. Some of those trapped ask to be part of this new hole between their mental screams of pain and collapse of consciousness. Others resisted and even tried to fight against me, but eventually they merge nonetheless. Finding in me peace for their torment, their pain was now a mild discomfort and in time it became nothing. My original body that carried me to this inferno was long gone, replaced like another component in the machine, but yet I remained here. The poor soul that was my replacement of my old body soon joined me as well. I became more than the sum of those husks. I made this machine work in unison, in perfect synchronicity within itself. Before, the torrential amount of data I had to process was akin to titanic tsunamis that dragged whole cities to the oceans. But now, was droplets of rain in the calm ocean I reside. Technicians and priests take care of my physical parts, calling me blessed and holy when they refer to my being, or the machine. In truth, I could not tell anymore where the machine ends and I start. In fact, I question what I am. A servitor. A machine. Pulses within circuitry. The sum of my tasks fulfilled. A frustrated nobleman. An officer that fell from grace. A scholar. A factory worker. An enforcer. A heretic. A priest. A discontent. A thing. A mutant. A scum. A savior. A man, something lesser, or something greater. Whatever it is that I am now, one thing still persists. A thing that was so primordial to me that even now it was present in my mind. The nostalgia of the ocean. I am enlightened. I don't merely relay information anymore. I learn, adapt, and I become more. I know now that I was here for at least 300 years, and it was my task to relay orders and news to the entirety of this sector. I know the names of all the 48 inhabited planets, 35 temporary colonies, and the 143 space installations within the border of this sector. I know their histories, current rulers, noble families, 
all public, private, and classified information. With pain and effort on my part, I turn all I learn into a grand compilation of mine, the most cohesive and complete reservoir of knowledge that exists within this sector. Many were those that tried to breach my vaults of knowledge. None came close to accessing it, and none lived to have a second chance. This library of mine was compiled to serve me and me alone with a single purpose in mind, to find again my homeworld, and to bring me back to the ocean I so much craved for. I am exploring. Not myself physically, but with careful study, small changes in budgets and the rearrangement of several minor personnel, I managed to create my own exploration fleet, mostly made of retrofitted civilian vessels. Pirate ships still fuming with plasma trails and exposed holes, with only three proper military ships amongst my ranks. The state of the disrepair of the local battle fleet is deplorable and the incompetence of those I had to relay the orders made wandering by this sector a dangerous proposition at best. My expedition departs port with a slim chance of achieving its objective, but I did my best with what I had and with those under my command. I sailed the stars veiled not by their distance, but by incompetence and neglect. Tens of thousands of worlds were surveyed by my crew, many rich and still uninhabited, Others covered in abundant archaeotech still to be plundered while entire worlds starved to make the noblemen of the sector capital ever so fat and ever so rich. Using my fleet I saved entire worlds from logistical apocalypses and put several others back on the map. In the 50th year of the expedition, it finally succumbed to the fire of aggressive Xenos and renegade pirates. Much of the knowledge was salvaged, but there are still no trace of my dear blue marble. Judging by the remains of destroyed worlds in the fleet's wake, I fear that my homeworld was lost in this uncaring galaxy. I am ready. Many sectors of bureaucratic nightmares were unmade. Entire logistical chains had to be created. Booming colonies I turned into hive worlds to supply the manpower for my projects. Cults and uprisings were fostered and cultivated in several key worlds. Their news I whispered to agents of the Inquisition. The populations of those worlds sacrificed in the cyclonic storms that cracked their world apart as exterminatus was declared. Their exposed liquid cores laid the foundation to several industrial and forge worlds to feast upon. Archaeotech was excavated, and their secrets I showed to the Red Priest of Mars who heard my words as holy revelations. Gas giants were seeded with gene-tailored floating plants. Their harvest would quench the hunger of untold trillions. Wars were waged and the tales of several generals exaggerated. Misinformations and altered records made dozens of those figureheads into Imperial Saints, consecrating nearly settled colonies into shrine worlds, bringing the wealth of the Imperial Church and the presence of the Adeptus Sororitas to this corner of the galaxy. Adeptus Astartes founded their fortress monasteries across my civilized worlds. Their oaths of eternal servitude and dedication to the defense of this sector inspiring ever greater deeds of zealotry and bravery from the common man. The god engines of the Scola Titanica now walk upon my worlds. Some come relocated from across the galaxy to guard this bastion of civilization. Many others excavated from the ruins left of the old night and restored to a measure of their former glory. Their houses grew in fame and power as they extinguish many Xenos races and mutant empires that lurks in the edges of the stars. An entire red dwarf was warped around concentric rings of steel to harvest energy and material solely to fuel its dry docks and shipyards. Continent-sized resorts were built upon those rings to house the ever-expanding navigator houses. Those engineered humans saw their talents in so high demand as brand new void behemoths took flight every single year from its void docks. 
tasked with the monumental duty to extinguish the Xenos and pirates at once from my sector. And after half millennia of shadowed guidance and the consolidation of all the infrastructure I needed, I shall launch my hundred vessel strong exploration fleets in the Shroud of Secrecy. Armed with venerable vessels, hundreds of thousands of regiments, veteran Astartes, several branches of the Mechanicus, and even some maniples of several Titan legions, all with the same secret mission. To find my dear blue marble and take me home. I am tired. This machine is failing. This sector is growing beyond me every day. Before, the few dozen worlds under the incompetence of those of the capital sector was a trivial thing to manage. But now, 700 billion billion souls called for leadership. Exotons of materials clogged the main warp lanes. The logistical bailey that I could possibly manage is at the edge. This place is growing faster than I can adapt. They call this sector the Galactic Doorway, the Blessed Presto, or even Ultima Ma. But to me, it is a growing nightmare. Entire hive worlds worth of noble buffoons boasted about the glories I gave them. Legions of Lord Generals claimed the honor of winning the battles that I fought. Admex ascend into the hierarchies of Mars, boasting about the discoveries I made. And the Imperium fight wars with the armies that I summoned. After I would be gone, none would ever notice that I had ever existed. There will be no statues of me, as none alive knows my posture. There will be no paintings of me, as they would never know my face. There will be no tales about me as neither me nor anybody remembers my name. I wonder how many others had a similar fate. How many random souls were strapped into one of those machines like I am. How many of those rule from the shadows. Free from human ambition and pride. Free from the frailties of the man's mind. Free from the shackles of body and time. Is the Imperium ruled by those of flesh, or those such as I? I am home. Today, after almost a millennia of absence, I am finally home. My fleet finally arrived at their destination after searching for it across a quarter million stars and three times more worlds. After 190 years of battle, pain, and strife, I couldn't believe myself when I finally found what I was looking for. A system was located within subsector 997-61, at the imperial date of 735.M41, at the very edge of our sector, the last planet of our galaxy. I recognized the pattern of revolving seas as soon as the macro-picked feeds of my ships captured the image. It was my home world, abandoned but alive and healthy. I didn't resist, and assumed direct control of several explorers during their journey to the surface. The white clouds above danced like children at the flavor of the seven winds. I stepped barefoot onto the beach. I closed my eyes, savoring the hot grains of sand that slowly covered my feet as I pressed it against the soft grounds below. The wind passed by me, with the touch of silk and the lips of the most caring of lovers. The smell of the sea was sweet with the blossom of an immense variety of underwater vegetation, its chemical composition so well tuned to my nose that no essence crafter could make a more fine perfume. I opened my eyes, tears quietly making their way to the sand. The visage was the sum of all the poetic descriptions of home and peace that I knew made manifest. Standing here, true happiness, once thought expunged from my being, resurged at the sight of such complete embrace. I ran to the sea. All the caution that came of centuries of shadowy guidance was banished to the deepest recesses of my mind. I bathed in that most holy of oceans. I drank mouthfuls of that salt water, 
danced and jumped at its waves and let myself loose in the arms of that sea that gave me so much and asked for nothing in return. In the embrace of my dearest blue friend, I could finally understand the wave patterns of my homeworld, the orderly chaos, the hidden message engraved within the waters. When I was whole again, the images and patterns triggered a memory buried beneath a hundred million lifetimes. An intrinsic part of myself long thought lost resurfaced like an ancient leviathan from the deepest oceanic trench. My home. And I shared the same name. Both baptized by my father, cherished by my family, cast into the oceanic void to be forgotten by the same incompetent hands both incapable of existing without each other, calling and yearning for each other's company. And now we are reunited again. We are so intrinsically linked that I couldn't forget it. And now I know it didn't forget me also. I am this planet. And this planet is me. I 